Welcome to this AP check on cell potential work and free energy. So we're going to take a look at how all of this stuff dealing with redox reactions ends up um, being useful in order to do some electrochemistry. So the spontaneity of a redox reaction, um, we're going to be taking a look at cell potential. And so again, the the prime symbol that we have here is under standard conditions. So um, we're going to be taking a look at this under standard conditions first, and then we'll look at non-standard conditions. So we see that if the E cell is greater than zero, it's a spontaneous or a voltaic or a galvanic cell. Um, and if it is less than zero, then it's not spontaneous. Um, and we have to go back again to our redox reactions and think about, um, I know some people use oil rig, I like Leo Gur. Okay, either way, or oil rig. to think about how we set these um, equations up. So in the first one it says, is H2 capable of reducing um, nickel? And in order to do this, we have to get some values. And I'm gonna show you, this is also in the appendix, uh, which is in the book, or you can find that linked in, um, In one note. So here we see these two values. So this is table A 5.5. And so we see hydrogen is here. Now in this case, if we are going to be using H2 to reduce, then H2 would actually be being oxidized. Okay, if it's the reducing agent, remember it's being oxidized. And so I'm going to flip this equation around. Now whenever you flip an equation, uh, in the standard reduction um, potential charts, then you need to actually flip the sign. And you'll notice that for this one, it's zero. So nothing is gonna change with that. Okay, we just have zero here. And then nickel is not going to change because we're going to reduce it. Okay, so um, if we're gaining electrons, we're reducing it, and that's what's actually happening as it is. And so we're going to use that negative 0.23. So I'm going to show you how I will do that with this particular one. So let's go ahead and set up H2 is going to be oxidized. Okay, so we're going to have an oxidation and a reduction. And because it's asking if it's capable of reducing the nickel 2 plus. So Ni2 plus plus 2 electrons down here. And then 2H plus and 2 electrons. Okay, on the right hand side. And then finally, nickel will be here. So then I have to take those values, and actually, let me, let me change the color of this here. Let's change this to be blue. Okay. So let's go ahead and get these values that we would have. So in the chart, we saw that the value was 0, 0.00 volts. And then for the nickel one, it was negative 0 0.25. So when I add these up, okay, so if I add these up, I get an overall cell of negative 0 0.25. Now, that means that it's going to be a value that is less than zero, okay, because it's a negative value. And that means that it, it won't be spontaneous. It's not going to happen. Okay. So the answer to this question would be no. H2 cannot reduce... Ni2 plus 
because, okay, so that reason, justify your answer, it's a negative E cell, and that is non-spontaneous. Okay, I'm going to run out of the room there, okay? But this here is why that won't happen. Okay, so we can evaluate whether something can or cannot be reduced. Okay, so a little bit on electrical work here. Um, energy generated by the system, the electrochemical cell, that is able to be used to do work. And so if this was actually a positive value, if it was greater than one, then we could use that to be able to do work, and that's how we use batteries. Um, we calculate using standard reduction potentials, which is that chart I just showed you, which is considered to be the max cell potential. Okay, it doesn't mean that we're always going to get that out of it. That's just the maximum that we could. We know that there are some inefficiencies, so the actual work will always be less than that max due to inefficiencies and the transfer of energy. Um, we often lose some of that energy as heat. Remember, we can't gain or lose, but we can transform it um, into something else. And when it goes to heat, it's really not very usable other than maybe to keep us warm. The cell potential and electrical work depend on the number of electrons transferred. Okay, So those are some things to keep in mind. So if we're transferring more electrons, well, that could be a good thing. All right. So the cell potential and free energy, we want to kind of connect these ideas. Okay, we have an equation. Okay. Delta G is equal to negative N, capital F, and the E cell. Okay, so what are, what are all of these different items in here? obviously know what delta G is, okay, free energy. So N is going to be the moles of electrons transferred. Okay, F is going to be a new constant and you should find that on your um, constants sheet. It is 96,485, sometimes you'll see this rounded, coulombs per mole of electron. And then the E cell, or the cell potential, it is in units of joules per coulomb. Okay, so we see those coulombs are in two different places. Those are going to be able to cancel. And that is also equivalent to volts. Okay, so V um, All right, so we have a problem to solve here. It says cal calculate the cell potential and the free energy at 25 degrees Celsius for the following redox reactions. Okay, and remember that's going to be our um, standard, okay, 298 Kelvin. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to establish our redox reaction. So we're going to go ahead and split this apart. Okay, so we have I minus. Now, the value for that is going to be plus, we're going to have some electrons. Actually, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Okay. Um, on the chart, well, I can do that now. On the chart, it's plus two electrons, okay, because we have to balance these, so we need a two there. So that's going to be on, on our chart. So for that, if we go back to the appendix and look up the value, we're going to see that that is negative 0 0.53. Okay. 
The next thing we need to do is the other half reaction. So MnO4 minus Mn2 plus. Okay, and remember in order to be able to do all of this, we're gonna have to add our 4H2O, our 8H plus, we're gonna have to go back through and balance this. and five electrons. Okay, we're not completely done with that yet, but we're gonna have a value for that one that is 1.21 volts. Okay, now we don't have the same number of electrons, so we're gonna have to go ahead and make some adjustments here. So let's do that. So the top one we're gonna multiply by five, and the bottom one we're gonna multiply by two, so that's gonna give us 10, 16, 2, 2, and 8. And the top one, we're going to have 10, 5, and 10. Okay, that allows us to go ahead and cancel out the electrons that are being transferred and get a total redox equation Now, when, when we are working with these situations, we are not going to multiply, and I think this is always a tricky bit, we do not multiply our um, cell potentials for the half reactions by those factors that we, we multiplied the rest of it by. A lot of times we do that with things, in this particular situation we do not, and so we end up adding these up Okay, because we have an oxidation and a, and a reduction. So for the cell, we're just going to add those and we end up with 0 0.68 volts. Okay, or remember, or joules per coulomb. Okay. So even though the total number of electrons um, and those factors we multiplied didn't in impact this, they, they are going to impact the overall delta G, the free energy. And so if we go back up to that other equation and we plug these values in, okay, so delta G is equal to the number of moles of electrons transferred. Well, that was a total of 10, right? So we had 10 electrons that were transferred. So remember the negative on the outside here. So we had 10 moles of electrons times that F value, okay, the Faraday's constant. So 96,485. I'm going to put the coulombs per mole underneath because I'm running out of room here. And then times the 0 0.68 joules per coulomb. Okay. So when we calculate all of that out, we get negative 660,000 joules. We could also make that number into kilojoules if we wanted to. Okay, so negative 600. negative 660 kilojoules. Okay. All right. So that is how we do some of those calculations, and we will just continue to work through some additional ones when 